How's your night? Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. How is everybody? It's a beautiful morning here. My landlady just woke up. You know what I mean? She just woke up. She knows my voice, so when she hears daddy's voice, she'll be up. <laughs> yeah, she normally doesn't get up until probably another 31 hour, but she's already up already, right? She heard daddy's voice on live, so she's up. Um... So, please bear with me if you see her sleeping on my chest. <laughs> she's not tired, she's just trying to still get back to sleep, maybe. She will be sleeping. All right. How is everybody doing? Let me know how you're doing. How is your morning? How is your day like? Uh, it's afternoon already in Nigeria and Ghana. How is everything going? Nana, Edu, Eugene, great. May God bless you. Your good work. Thank you, Nana. Um, Erisi Finbar Hughes. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, patience, I live for Christ. Hello, Princess. Yes, Princess is doing good here. Uh, yesterday, remember, I got a, a lot of groups, huh? She loves grapes. She loves grapes. So I got a whole box of fruits. <clears throat> yeah, how is everyone doing? I want to make sure we get about 30 people live so I can go into the details. I have quite a busy day today, so I may not be coming on and off on, on as much as I did. Um I want to talk to nurses. If you are a nurse, if you know anybody who is a nurse in any part of africa ghana nigeria cameroon anywhere um, kenya south africa uganda rwanda any part of the world if you know anyone who is a nurse a midwife or someone who is working in the health sector i just want to talk to them okay i want to talk to them so let's get the numbers up at least if i get about 30 people i'm gonna pour everything out um I don't really need the numbers, but I could go in. But I want to make sure that when somebody comes in later, I have covered their questions, right? I want to cover when people are on. So let me tell you something I did this morning. I decided to respond to almost every message in my DM and most of my emails. It took me about an hour and a half to do that. That is a lot of time just to respond to the messages in my DM and my mail my inbox my email it took me 90 minutes to respond to all of that wow and um i found something the trend the questions were almost the same the questions were almost the same some of them were incomplete messages somebody would just say hi how are you or just hi without a message or without a content it's difficult for me to respond to those ones but i do my best you see, I don't want to discourage you guys from asking questions. And I want to be able to answer to as many as possible. The truth is that my page is growing. I'm currently over 5,000 followers. You are only seeing the number of likes, which is about 1,000. But the truth is that my page has grown a lot. I have over 5,000 followers now combined. Right? So that means the page is growing. And it might get to a point I may not be able to respond to everybody's message. So, as time goes on, I'm going to be asking you for ideas on how I can do this. I want to make sure, one, I don't discourage you from asking questions. I want you to feel free to ask your questions. But I want to also find an effective way that I can be able to respond to almost everything. Um, I also realize that some people just have a difficulty in scrolling through and getting the videos, right? So, people want to catch it live and maybe the same thing. That's why I'm having to repeat some of the sessions that I've done. So guys, uh, maybe as time goes on, we, 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 we can figure out how to do this. I don't want to discourage anyone at all. I want you guys to ask your questions. Um, I'll do my best to respond to them. Okay, I will do my best. But if you can, remember to always go through my page. You will surely find something that has already um, been covered on your topic or your question. Okay, so help me there. I'm going to do my best to respond to everybody's message. 
nurses, 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 nurses. How to come here if you're already a nurse. I'm saving the portion or the part on express entry. I've done express entry before once. I'm going to do it again. But I'm trying to do it in a very practical way where I bring people who have come here on express entry live on the show, right? Like somebody who came as an accountant or somebody who came as a, a medical doctor or something like that. I want them to come and share their story so that their journey can inspire. That is why you are seeing me delay a little bit on express entry. When you see me go live, there is a good chance I'm going to come with somebody who just came on express entry. I have found some people, um, about, at least about 10 people. But the challenge is uh, not everybody is comfortable coming on camera and all of that, right? So I'm still trying my best. I will do my best to go back to the express entry conversation and be able to answer all your questions in regards to that, okay? So bear with me. I know many of you are waiting for that. Please bear with me. All right. Um, Bright or uh good to join today. Bright, nice to have you. I met Kamal, the journalist. Did I get you right? I can't afford to miss your live videos. I got motivated. I get motivated every day. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Mm. You are a blessing to Ghana. God bless you. We have 25 people online, guys. Remember, if we don't share this video, nobody gets blessed. Mm. I believe in sharing. And trust me, I have never lacked. I have never lacked. I believe in sharing even my small share you might not even think you are sharing money or something by sharing information you are blessing people okay so please share and share and share share them on your whatsapps share them everywhere let it reach people we have 30 people online i'm gonna go straight to nurses how do you come here if you're a nurse guy i wish i could confidently say a nurse can come as an express entry skilled labor. I am yet to find anyone who has been successful coming here as a nurse, but through express entry. Now guys, in case you are wondering, what do I mean by express entry? Express entry is a type of application, immigration application here in Canada, where you can put in your information your education, your work experience, and a few other things. And then they generate a score or a number for you, a score, right? Based on your, the information they provide. The information has to be genuine though, not fake. And then they put you in a pool. And then when they put you in a pool, as time goes on, if your number gets to be called as part of those who made it, because they have a minimum number they look for every two weeks or something like that when they make the call, right? If your number happens to be part of them, they will ask you to submit your documents and then you go through like an application process. Um, and if you will get lucky and you get selected, you are issued a permanent resident to come to Canada. So the advantage here is this. Somebody who is lucky and goes through an express entry application and gets an invitation, if you are successful, you are coming and you are arriving in Canada straight as a permanent resident. I'm going to talk about that in the future. Now, I'm talking about this because I want to talk about nurses. I'm yet to find anybody who just had a nursing diploma get an express entry. I'm not saying it's not possible, but I haven't found anyone. And I don't want to give you information that I can, I can vouch for, right? So nurses, I'm yet to find anything in that area for you when it comes to express entry. But let me tell you what I found for nurses. I have talked to at least 20 people in Canada who were nurses in Ghana. 20 individuals who are currently in Canada and they are working. Some of them are working as nurses. Um, some are working in different fields like personal support worker or something else. So I interviewed them. I normally talk to them and I ask them, how did you come here? And they share their stories with me. The most recent person I talked to was last night. She came from a hospital in Wa, and she recently just came here, maybe about a year ago. Um, so I asked her, how did you come? And there's what I found, guys. Almost all the nurses, in fact, all the nurses I spoke with, they came here through colleges. They came here through colleges. 
what it means is that they had to apply to a college they got an admission they either paid a minimum requirement of fees maybe 60 percent of the fees and then they added their bank statement and their proof of work as nurses and voila they get it i'm going to go over it again so they use a college approach to come here so they can go and do a college diploma some of them get lucky they do it in nursing in the colleges some who don't get it they apply for personal support worker or uh, um, palliative care if anybody can type that palliative care yeah? palliative care which is like a, a type of course here palliative care if anybody can type that that's one of the courses i found that most of them are also doing and um once uh, joel adama you tried applying for um However, I got stuck. Yeah, Joel, we're going to get back to that. Please have some patience. We'll get to that, okay? So they, they either come here to do personal support worker courses in the colleges or they do um, anything in the health sector. Um, social, we even do social work as a course, um, critical care, palliative care. These are our courses. John, thank you so much for putting that palliative care. That's a course. That's a course, yeah? Palliative care. Uh, Quam School J, thank you for putting that there. All right. And then when they do those courses, they then continue and then they do, they apply for their permanent residence. And whilst they are doing their permanent residence, some of them are able to transfer their nursing credentials from Ghana to Canada. Canada allows you to transfer. The most important thing is that you enter the country, right? And you do a college. Once you finish your college, you are able to transfer your Ghana license as a nurse to Canada. I think they make you go through a whole um, conversion process where you need to get some documents from Ghana Health Service or something like that. And then they will convert. So if you're in Nigeria, your Nigerian Health Service, they may ask you to get some documents from there. And then you write a, like a set, certain kind of exams, like a short exams called uh, something. They call it licentia, like a licensing exam for nursing. And then they are able to transition to become nurses in Canada, right? Um, I'm still going to be trying to get some nurses here to come and share those experiences with you guys. But guys, I particularly think that nurses who apply to colleges have an extremely high chance of getting their visa. I'll tell you why. It's just what I believe. It's not written on the embassy's website, but I believe that. If you are a nurse and you apply to come to a college, like some of the cheap, cheap colleges I shared, New Brunswick Community College, and um uh what is the other one north atlantic college these schools right these schools that i share north atlantic college and new brunswick these colleges or even let's say any other college uh, naga college or any other college if you apply to these schools and you come in even though you are a nurse and you you apply you get the admission you get your bank statement ready you add your proof of any other thing if you have a car any assets you have a land a family property you add the documents uh, you know, and you apply. There is a very high chance the Canadian Embassy or the IRCC, which is the new name for the Canadian Embassy now, um, in, uh, Immigration Refugees, IRCC, Immigration Refugees and Citizenship Canada. Immigration Refugees and Citizenship Canada. That's the name of them, the agency now. IRCC, Immigration, Refugees, and Citizenship Canada. If you apply and you're a nurse, I believe you have a very high chance of getting the visa. When I talked to these guys, they were all issued the visa easily. Do you know why? Canada is in need of nurses. Canada needs people who are from the health sector. So there is a good chance if you use a college approach. When the visa officer, uh, North Atlantic College, it's actually, there's no community in the J. So thank you for posting. J, J, do, Y, S. It's North Atlantic College located in the province of Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. All right. Listen carefully, guys. I'm saying that if you're a nurse and you apply to come to a college, the chances that you in particular, you will get a nurse or a midwife or maybe a lab, something, health, you, might, you make sure that you are in the health sector. If you apply, 
the chances that you will get the visa i believe is so high the reason is that you guys are like they, they need you this country needs nurses so if an officer is looking at it then your credential shows that you are a nurse from ghana they will give it to you easily share this let you get your nursing friends i'm not trying to get ghana and nigeria and south africa empty with nurses i don't think everybody will leave there are some people who just won't leave they will stay in ghana they will stay in nigeria but this is for those who have been looking for opportunities right please share this video with your nursing friends let them know it is so easy for a nurse to come to canada i have talked to them some of them are young guys in their early 20s late 20s some of them are in their mid 20s they were all nurses mm? one was working at the like i can't mention names they, i don't have their permission but guys i have talked to them believe me these are young individuals there was a lady i spoke with yesterday and she came from wah hospital and i asked her how did you get it this is a story he said well somebody told me about it and the person actually was like an agency or something in ghana so she had to pay the agency fee and they apply to the school, which I don't want you guys to go and pay. It's so easy to apply to, to, to the school yourself. Don't go pay nobody. Don't go pay nobody. Hmm? Do not go and pay anybody. So she paid an agency, got the admission. And after that, she applied for the visa herself. So I asked her, well, what did you add? What are the documents you added? She said, I added a bank statement. I asked her, was it your own bank statement? Did you have money in your account? She said, it was my uncle's bank statement. I said, okay, that's good. Then I asked her, what does it do? I just said, oh, my proof of nursing and a few other documents. And they approved it. Easy like that. Today she's here. And she's doing a college. She's just finished one year. She's about to try to start the next one. We spoke last night. She's from Wa Hospital in the upper... Is it upper east of ours? Upper east of ours. Okay. She's from Wa. I'm going to try and get some of these young nurses here to speak and encourage you guys. If you don't believe in traveling and you want to live or stay in Ghana, that's for you. Or Nigeria, that's for you. Stay. Please, we need some people to stay. If you don't, if it's not for you, do not leave. But if you have been looking, thank you, Ahmed Kama, Powers Wa, Powers W, Wa, Kat, Powers Wa. Good. If you are a nurse, a midwife, and you've been looking for an opportunity to travel, just know that you have a high chance of getting your visa approval if you. Gennaro, I'm pretty sure you were going to watch my previous video. I did a short one. I mentioned your name. Huh? So when you get a chance, go watch it. Gennaro, welcome. Please, please share. Mm? Share. Like, I just showed you how some of the cheapest colleges are. Guys, do you know that an international student from Nigeria who is studying in University of Ghana is paying over $5,000 a year for their fees? Do you even know that if they go to Zani College in Ghana, which a lot of Nigerian students come to Ghana to study at, they pay crazy amounts in dollars. Do you know if they know they can use those monies to come to Canada, they would have done it. But for lack of information, a Nigerian parent will send their awards to Ghana and pay crazy amounts, crazy amounts on top of the Doomso and Ghana's version of Nepal. Please share the video, share, let it reach. In fact, if you have parents in Nigeria and Gabon anywhere, share. Let them sponsor their kids to go for a better education somewhere else. I am not killing Africa. The system is already messed up. Share. Nurses, I know many of you have sent me messages. You've sent messages into my DM. You have been asking, how do I come here? Please, I can tell you for a fact, I haven't come across any scholarships for nurses. So I will encourage you to go into that. If you have a BSc in nursing, if you have a diploma in nursing, you're a midwife, I haven't come across any scholarship. If you do find one, come and share on my page so we can benefit everybody. But what I have found is that nurses are coming to Canada in their numbers and they are all coming through colleges. The average college is seventeen, eighteen thousand. I shared colleges with you that are as cheap as eight thousand Canadian dollars. They don't even ask you to pay the full fees. If you have savings, if you've gotten some huge back pay in Ghana, you know what a back pay is, eh? Our politicians are giving themselves back pays. Have you heard that? Their wives are getting big, big back back pays. Mm? Crazy money. They are paying their wives so who don't have appointments. <laughs> 
Oh, my country and my continent. <laughs> oh, this well. <laughs> they are paying their wives and their concubines who don't have political appointments. They are paying them money in my country called Ghana. You see? My Nigerian people, you guys have a certain habit that I don't like. I don't like it. Don't hate me. I don't like it. You will always like comparing yourself with Ghana, especially the areas that Ghana is doing well. Ghana has electricity better. Um, Ghana has better roads. So Ghana, this thing. Please, that one, the wrong comparison. You know? Don't compare yourself with your brother who is taking one small step. You must compare forward. Compare with a higher standard, not Ghana. Ghana is not doing well. Don't be deceived. Don't. I never compare myself backwards. In fact, me, I don't compare myself with my friends who are making one dollar more than me no my 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 dream is so big so when i compare myself it's always forward whatever i'm making now when i'm compared look you know the kind of people i compare myself with the robert kiyosakis who owns seven thousand apartments plus the people who have millions and millions in all kind of assets these are the people i compare myself with you know why they are my standard of living they are the standard of what i want to become I don't go and compare myself with a friend who is making $5 more than me. It's called wrong comparison. You see, the African brother, instead of comparing himself with a higher standard outside, he's going to compare himself with another West African country and say, these people are doing better there. I'm not saying don't call out Ghana if you are doing something good. But Ghana is never the standard. So, Omonaija, please, make on know they take Ghana. They make your standard. Oh. Ghana, we know we, we ourselves we are bleeding, we are complaining. Eh? You people go there, they go talk, say, our president, do something small, good. Um, we've done this, and you are happy about it. I appreciate that. But that one, a wrong comparison. That one, a wrong comparison. Please, go and see what they happen for Ghana today. Then they pay their wives and concubines, so money, politicians. So imagine if I have five wives, all of them go get money for Ghana. Can you see that? That's the kind of leadership we have. But when you look at it from Nigeria, you compare to you, uh, what your president or your country is doing, you think Ghana is better. Now, wrong comparison. Compare forward. Compare forward. Higher standard. Eh? <laughs> Don't compare with another mediocre person. Eh? Compare forward. Compare forward. Eh? Please. Ghana is not the standard. Ghana is not the standard. Ghana is struggling. We are just pretending to be better in West Africa. We are struggling. We are bleeding. We are not as bad as Nigeria, but we are never the standard. Nurses, 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 please take advantage of this. Most of the nurses who came here either used their parents' bank statement, uh, uncles, and what a family member's bank statement and stuff. Most of them use... Um, um charlotte let me read your message charlotte your message has disappeared oh let me bring it back mm, charlotte where are you charlotte i just lost charlotte can you post when you post okay please nursing degree or diploma um and uh runners please am i qualified charlotte yes remember what i said about the colleges all you need is a minimum of secondary school so if you are a nurse already suggest that you already have that because you have a diploma which is even better than it um uh, so when you're applying to a college, use your diploma, use your diploma, your transcript and your certificate, right? But when it gets to the application of the visa, I'm going to probably go over that as well. Any of you, if you get your admission um, and you're applying, feel free to send a message to me. I can give you some small tips on how to put your documents together and all of that, right? Don't go and pay no agency. Please don't go and pay no agency. Please share, share. Let this get to nurses. Nurses are hot cakes in Canada. The average nurse here makes about I spoke with um, a Filipino friend of mine, and she was telling me she's a new nurse in Canada. She also came here to do uh, a college program, and then after that, she transferred her license, and she's practicing now. She's making $33 an hour. Guys, do the math. She's doing $33 an hour. That's how much she makes as a nurse. And um, this is something I'm not telling you because I heard it somewhere. I actually spoke with her. I know her. And she told me she made $33 an hour. 
So $33 an hour times 40 in a week. How much is that? Can somebody do the math and put it there? My estimation tells me that is about $70,000 a year. So this nurse is making about $70,000 a year. Now, how much is the average nurse making in Ghana? How much is the average nurse making in Nigeria? Post it there. Let's compare. For one year, how much is the average nurse making in Ghana or in any African country in one year? The average nurse here is making this much for the same work. But in other countries, they have to actually, wow, it's, it's, it's pathetic. It's, we don't value labor. We don't at all. We don't value labor. Can you imagine in Ghana, nurses have to go on demonstration just to get an appointment. Can you imagine that? Nurses are going on demonstration to get appointments. They have to go on demonstration too so they can be bonded. Is that the term? To be get to, to be bonded. Meaning that we have excess of nurses, so we have so many trained people who are nurses. Hmm? They are in Ghana begging for jobs. Another country is in need of you. Please take advantage of this. Share and share and share. Charlotte says 950 Ghana, I believe you. <laughs> so Charlotte, multiply that by 12 and see how much we get in a year for a nurse. Hmm? How much do we get in a year for that? Charlotte, if you can do the math for me. My, 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 I'm busy here, so I can't type anything. Um, Charlotte, Mr. Chukwebuka, uh, you said you sent me something. I'm going to look at it. Chukwebuka, if your message is not too private, you can post it here. I'm going to respond to that as well. My junior sister is a nursing now. She uh, is done. I will be stable. I will just push her. Yeah, push her. Push her quick. Push her quick to come, huh? Push her. Push her to come. And when they come here and they live a better life, you will know. You will know. You will know. How much do nurses make in a year? 8,000 Ghana cities? Now, 8,000 Ghana cities in Canadian dollars is about... It's about $2,000. It's about 2,000 Canadian dollars. I believe, yeah, it's, it's even less than 2,000 Canadian dollars. Now, 2,000 Canadian dollars is a monthly pay here. <laughs> It's minimum monthly pay. In other words, in other words, the average person, <laughs> minimum, minimum. In other words, that is somebody's monthly pay here. Minimum wage, oh, minimum wage. It's not um, annual, my minimum. Hmm? Minimum wage, guys. One of my my jobs that I do, eh? One of it's not even my full time job, eh? <laughs> even that one. One of my full time. Sorry, not my full time job. One of my part-time, some of the things I do part-time. Eh? I don't even spend a lot of hours on that. Even that one, in a month, I make about $4,000, dollars $4 to $5,000. It's not even my full-time. It's not even my full-time. It's not even a full-time. I make about four to $5,000 every month doing that. Wow. And I know you are saying, I'm saying this. This is not even my full-time job. It's just a part-time. Of course, that is what I'm doing. There are some people who are just making maybe a thousand plus or two thousand. It depends on what they are doing, right? But guys, all I'm trying to say is this. Don't feel sorry for your country. You are responsible for yourself. The life you get here, look, when you die, they'll bury you. When you die, your family will bury you. When you die, your country will bury you. If you get lucky, if you were killed by the government, they will come and visit, they will come to your phone right, and give some money to your family. If they didn't kill you directly, your family will bury you. Your country doesn't care about you. I know this about Africa. They do not care about you. Look after yourself. Look after yourself, please. Look after yourself. Your country doesn't care about you. You only have 70 years to live. If you get lucky, as we are talking now, you've already done 20 plus. Another 20 ahead of you is retirement. You won't be able to do anything. You can't even do anything with your wife. You would have been so old. You have an active three decades to live from 20 plus to 50. That is your prime. Do something. Don't let nobody deceive you. You only have one life. YOLO, 
you only live once you only live once make nobody they deceive you eh? qualified nurses and midwives receive between 19,000 to 220 per year for staff nurses grade point one albert thank you for sharing that that is even p not two that is still p not it is still p not guys if somebody is making over fifty thousand, sixty thousand, seventy thousand dollars, some of them even make over a hundred thousand dollars, right? I have seen a pay slip of a nurse in the U.S. and this person is making over a hundred thousand dollars, a nurse. So don't be deceived. Do not be deceived. Your country doesn't love you. Maybe you love your country, but the leaders don't love you. When I say your country, I mean the leaders. Don't quote me wrong. Your leaders do not care about you. They don't care about you, guys. You are responsible for yourself because the leaders don't care about you. Make decisions that will not. Look, look at this girl here. Do you know I could have had her in Ghana? Do you know I could have had this girl in a hospital in Ghana where if my wife was going to labor, I would have been praying and fasting and praying tongues and everything just for birth. When we were having her, I didn't have to worry. Because the system is so good. My child could be carrying a Ghanaian passport today. But because of decisions I made yesterday, today she holds a Canadian passport. Can you imagine that? Choices. The choices you make today go impact your generations behind. I'm telling you. If you don't look smart today, eh? tomorrow your children will suffer more than you've ever suffered. If you don't make the right decisions today, Tomorrow, your children will suffer more than you ever did. Please, look smart. Your leaders don't care. Your senators don't care. Your parliamentarians don't care. They care about their themselves. Belly full where they sweet them. Now, belly full where they sweet them all. Eh? Then they share all the money, give their concubines. You, they don't care about you. Please, take make decisions that you'll be proud of make decisions that will impact your future kids make decisions that you will sit back and say i can die in peace they don't care i don't have to worry about my kids future because i've made decisions in the past that is generating fruit today you you want day ghana you think you can save everybody in the hospitals you think you are the number one nurse who is going to be a tarzan or some song uh tarzan or superman or whatever okay Stay in Ghana and build the country if you believe that is your calling. I don't want you to leave. But if you know you've been looking for opportunities, this is your chance. Please, please and please. Nurses, midwives, please and please. Your country don't care about you. When you die, they will bury you. And they'll write a nice tribute. When you die, they will bury you. And they'll write a nice tribute. When you die, they will bury you. You only live once. Make the most of your now. Your youth is golden. Use it. I never regretted the day. In fact, when I was leaving Ghana, before I applied, I knew... Hmm. Guys, when I was in my final year in Legon doing my, my degree, let me share this with you. I was so depressed. I didn't even think there was depression in Ghana. Eh? But there is depression. Let me tell you my level of depression that I had. I was so depressed. I was so depressed when I was in my final year. Yet I was among the top students, huh? I was a first class holder. But I was depressed in my final year's level in Ghana. And I suspect you will would have also gone through the same. You know why I was depressed? I started asking myself, so when I finish what next? Like that because like it was as if I could I already knew there was not going to be a job for me. The jobs were not there. Many of my colleagues had already graduated and they were so smart. They were sitting home for eight years and seven years and ten years without a job. First class holders. So I knew my fate was almost going to be similar. So my depression was because I knew the future was bleak in Ghana and I didn't know. In fact, some people finish their school tertiary in Legon and they don't even go home. They are just staying on campus because when they go home, they will be more miserable at home than on campus. I was one of them. I, I was on campus, guys. If you remember ever seeing me on Legon campus, I was on campus after school. 
and I was still preaching in a Kwafu hall. I was preaching a young man in a Kwafu hall, even when I finished school, because I had nowhere to go. Which company where they go apply to? I had nowhere to go. I was so depressed. People will see you walking around, graduate, but inside you, you are, you are crying because there are no opportunities for you. That was my depression. It was God that brought the traveling to Canada opportunity my way through a stranger. Guys, go look for this man and say a big thank you to him. God used him to bless me. Emmanuel Aborinya. Emmanuel Aborinya. God used this man to bless me. He was not even a close friend. God used him to bless me. He just told me about this opportunity. And I said, Lord, thank you. Emmanuel Aborinya from the northern region of Ghana. A-B-U-R-I-N-Y-A. -A. Go to his Facebook and say thank you for making it possible for us to have a Choco Millionaire today. God bless that man. Emmanuel Aburinya. A-B-U-R-I-N-Y-A. That was the man God used to bless me. From nowhere, he just told me, young man, I'm traveling. I had an opportunity, scholarship. Would you want it? I say, what is that animal? He said, scholarship. I said, is it from the government of Ghana? He said, no, Canadian government. And he began telling me everything and he told me. He said, follow me on Facebook and he began sharing. He coached me through. Without him, I wouldn't be here today, guys. I would have been stuck in some, some, some old office somewhere in Ghana, man, with my brain wasted. You know? And when you travel, they will come and tell you brain drain. When you, kill, you are killing brains in Ghana. You are killing brains in Ghana. And when people travel, you say brain drain. Nonsense, man. It's nonsense. Without this man, my opportunity wouldn't have come. God bless him. And I will never forget his name. I will never forget the good he did for me. By just sharing this information with me. Why am I telling you this? There are many final year students in the tertiary levels all across Africa who are depressed. You know why? They don't know what next. They don't know what next. Some are having to even marry fast, just hoping that their husbands will provide for them because they don't know what next. Some men are, are going into fraud. Some men today who are doing Yahoo, Yahoo, where they see, eh? Now, because of unemployment, though, Boys must survive now. Boy must survive. In they do Yahoo. In they do fraud on computer. Because the book sense where you get. As they no get opportunity, use use them. In a cafe where we go use them for. See? Who create them? Who cause them? Now bad leadership sent from the pit of hell. Don't ever feel sorry for yourself for making a decision to travel. It is not a crime. It is not a crime. You may have heard me say this in my first video. Man is not a tree. Man no be tree. Oh. Tree when they plant tree. Tree no the theme of move. Oh. The place where you plant and there we go day. Man no be tree. Oh. Man is not a tree. Move if you can legally. Move if you can legally. Ahmed, Kamal, please share and share. Let this video reach people. Talk to the nurses. Talk to the nurses. Shall it? There is a, a, when I was in Legon, there was a nurse that I wanted to date, but things didn't go well. I forgot her full name. I wish I can. She was trying. I remember those times. She was trying to go to Germany. She was trying so hard. She saved money. She had a lot of money in her account to back pay, and she was looking for opportunities to travel. I forgot her full name. I wish I find that lady so I can help her travel. You know? Like, at that time, she was desperate. She had the savings. She was just looking for means to travel to Germany. Her first name is Gloria. I can't remember the other one. Huh? I was trying so hard to date that lady around that time. Hmm? I wish she finds my video. I will be happy to assist her to come here. Huh? Guys, do you know anybody who is a nurse? Nurses, are at least, you guys make a little bit better. Huh? At least your salary is a bit better. You have all kinds of loans you can get from, the, from banks. Huh? If you can afford it, please find a way to travel. Because if you don't, when you die, we go bury you. <laughs> if you die, we go bury you. If you die, we will bury you. If you were killed by the government and you get lucky, they will attend your funeral. 
I hope this video inspires you. And I hope this video answers all the questions of my nurses who have sent me several messages. And I hope you've been inspired. It doesn't matter which part of Africa you are. It doesn't matter. I tell you this. Even if you make minimum wage in Canada, you are better off than anybody. Young Choco Scholar, God bless you. I like your name. Young Choco Scholar, God bless you. Hmm? Please, don't feel sorry for traveling. Don't feel sorry. You may have heard me say this. Your favorite celebrities, they are all traveling. You know? Where is Techno? I heard that three days ago, I heard that Techno has relocated to US. Is it true? Nigeria is confirmed for me. Oh. <laughs> I heard that Techno of uh, Techno, the musician Techno from Nigeria. I heard that he has relocated. Is it true? Let me know. If you are in Nigeria listening, let me know. If you are watching, let me know. Is it true? Has Techno traveled? Has he relocated to the US? Is it true? Eh? Ah, chiku chiku ebuka chiku chiku ebuka. Hey, only my my brother. God bless you. He has traveled. Eh? Is he going to record music there, or he just is this temporary, or he has traveled permanently? <laughs> Your favorite celebrity is running away, <laughs> and they are telling you not to go. They there. <laughs> you know why they will tell you not to go? They need your vote. <laughs> Eh? Look, there is a celebrity in Ghana who mentioned the name. Do you know where she gave birth? She's she's very popular on TV. She gave birth in Canada. Eh? Eh? People go they watch, they go get belle, 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 go take visa, say that they travel, go visit. They can't, they go born, and they go run away. <laughs> they go collect the passport, give their children. Eh? If your country did good, people go to chase your passport. Eh? Tell me who they chase. <laughs> Your celebrities are traveling, they are relocating. If that country they good, themselves, themselves, then go stay. Eh? The country no good. The system they it 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 jaga. It jaga it it just it a pasca. Ghana go say a pasca. Nigeria go say you do jaga jaga. <laughs> yes. Yeah? Your favorite celebrities, when they are pregnant, they travel, oh. they go hide their pregnancy, they go wear big jalabia. Eh? Or if they have arrived for the airport, they don't want to make the officer see say they are pregnant, eh? they go wear big jalabia. And they can't give birth with that, too. And they can't collect passport, give their children. And they think smart. Smart. Hmm? Your favorite rapper in Ghana, where they like, in the boy in, 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 in children for USO. I don't go mention names. Hmm? <laughs> But you wait there, you wait there, you wait there. Then say make it day ajebule ojota, make it they say for kubwa, make it they say for ibado, hustle for there. He go be, he go well. Hi, which kind of fate is this? <laughs> this they, they are telling you to stay in for of work room. <laughs> which kind of fate is this? Now wickedness. Eh? Tell your nurses that they should not feel ashamed to travel. It is not a crime to travel. Mm -hmm. It is not a crime to travel. Mm -hmm. It is not a crime to travel. It's not a crime. I have never felt guilty of traveling. You know why? This video I'm making is for Africa. It's not even for Canadians. They don't need it. If I don't care about my country, if I, yes, they don't discriminate, though. they don't discriminate about anything here. Look, guys. If you think I don't care about Africa, why do who do you think I'm making these videos for? Is it is it for Canadians? <laughs> is it for the white people? I'm making it for my continent because I care. Yeah, I care to know. Anybody who know me, no say. They, <laughs> anybody who know me, hmm? no say the background where they come from, eh? You know good. It be impossible background, impossible, impossible. Now God will lift me up. My God will lift me up. Hmm. Nyango pon e yimi o. Nyango pon e yimi fi mo. Mebu si ame fi anya kra 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 yanka wasem. Mebu si ane nyab ba ko ba ko ba ko. Nyango pon e ne yimi. So I want to share the same with you. Because if you don't take this, if you don't make smart choices today, your kids will suffer and they will suffer worse and harsher conditions than you did. 
Let me take your questions. Anybody with a question now? Please ask your questions. So today's session was for nurses, midwives, and people in the health sector. Mm? Save your money well. Mm? Mm? Save your money well. If you have a lot of savings mm? and you're planning to go and do a big wedding for it, maybe it's time you channel it into something like this and do maybe a simple, simple marriage and channel the money into something like this. All right. Let me take your questions. Anybody with any question, I'm about to go off so I can... Go get my daughter ready, brush her teeth, feed her for the day and all of that. So um, anybody with any question, let me take your questions now. If you have any questions, nurses, Kofi Gaddafi, I'm interested in Canada. Trisha uh, Spendy, please, which number can I call you? Trisha, unfortunately, I don't have the capacity to uh, pick direct phone calls. You can send me a DM and send an audio note. If your question is something that you think can benefit everybody, please post it here and I'll read an answer. All right. There are so many personal messages that sometimes answer the same thing. So if your question is not too personal, send it here. I'm going to read that and answer it, Trisha, if you don't mind. But if you think it's very personal and you don't want anybody to know about it, just send me an audio note in my DM, okay? Send me an audio note. I will try and record and uh, respond back to that, okay? All right. Um, uh, there is no liquid, uh, age. Yeah, Charlotte Ato Papo. Uh, is there any age limit uh, limit to come to a quality? No, there is no age limit. Minimum secondary school. What it means is that if you even have a brother or a sister who has just finished the secondary school and your parents can afford, they can still come to Canada straight to do a college here. They don't even need to go to university. Uh, this is good for the people who, whose parents have money from Nigeria and all over. Instead of taking your kids to go and do a an uni in Ghana, you can sponsor them to straight come and do a college or a, even a uni here. All right? Minimum, there is no age limit, guys. There is no age limit. All you need is the credentials, okay? Canada doesn't discriminate based on age. Josephine, thank you for sharing. I like what you're sharing, Josephine. I'm here to click on it. Um, thank you so much for sharing. Eric Tete, uh, between skill labor and school, which one do you think? It depends on what your qualifications are. Um, I'm going to do another session on skill labor. For now, we are just talking about how to come here. Uh, as a college student or somebody with scholarship. Today's session is about nurses, actually, and the midwives and all of that. Uh, but if you are skilled labor um, and you are somebody with a globally competitive skill set who you, and you train for that and you have certification and experience for that, uh, you could come here as a skilled labor using the express entry. Um, these are normally for people with serious jobs, uh, serious qualifications, like um, a big manager of a company, like, uh, you know, um, an accountant, a chartered accountant who trained, who was an ACCA or ICA, um, a programmer, um, a software engineer, not by road. When we go school, go get training, get company experience. Huh? You, used to, you work for Glow as a technician, a, 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 um, a serious tech guy, you know. You work for MTN. You work, these are the people that are called the skilled labor. You are a mechanic. You went to school for that. You went to a polytechnic to do mechanics. You work with a big company doing that. You, you are skilled labor. You, we can talk about that. I have a video on my page about Express Entry. So if you actually do go through, you'll find it as well, okay? Um, a, a child testimony, Jeno Viva. Uh, please, how about professional teachers? Uh, professional teachers, you can consider coming here through the colleges. I know some teachers from Ghana who came here through colleges. So yes, professional teachers, that's still a diploma. You can use that to apply to a college and come, okay? Um, I'm living and working in Dubai, Kofi Gaddafi. You can still come. If your minimum requirement, if you do have the re minimum, you can come. The rejected stone is now the great cornerstone for our beloved generation. God bless you, my brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Rania, that man there, please celebrate him. Celebrate Rania for me. Show him a love. He's, he's, he's an amazing guy. An amazing guy, guys. He's an amazing guy. Um, Rania, God bless you. Um... Um, Eric, I have an HND and degree in electrical engineering. Um, I don't know. I think I've spoken with you directly. If your degree, your class is very weak, you might want to consider a college uh, diploma. Okay. Um, by weak, I mean if you had a third class or a very low first class, sorry, a very low second class lower, but which is very weak, you have a slim chance. But if you have faith and you can put in other documents to support, you can look at Memorial University of Newfoundland. Memorial University of Newfoundland. Uh, a lower person can get it, but I recommend you add other strong documentation 
like a sample re written work, a research work or something like that. I have a video I've done on that. So please go and watch that if you can. The title is How to Come to Canada with Scholarship. But uh, in your situation, Mr. Tete, I believe most likely you want to also consider a college if you can afford that. In Domitable and Poussin, I have a diploma in mechanical engineering and have over 10 years of experience. Um, I suspect with express entry, you may need a degree. Um, give it a try. But I will, even if you are doing that, I will still try a diploma on the side in colleges, right? Um, they mostly will look for maybe a degree if you are doing an express entry. But give it a try. Don't give up. You can give it a try. You don't lose anything, okay? Don't lose anything. Are you okay? I will share it on the visa forum. Anyone who wants, thank you. All right. Tom Derry Kaiser. Some of you are not part of the visa forum. Yes, guys, I have a, another page called Canada Visa Forum hyphen Africa chapter. Somebody should type it there if you can. Canada Visa Forum hyphen Africa chapter. I recommend you follow that page. You know why? That page is going to become one of the biggest pages probably in Africa for sharing information about visa applications. If you are filling your visa form and you get stuck, instead of going to pay a connection mail or an agency, when you post a question there, somebody will answer your question. So please try and like that page. It is where we are going to be supporting each other on, on regarding our visa applications and stuff. Things that I am not available to answer, those with experience like Josephine, like any other person who may have tried and they have, you're going to see them actually support. I want it to be a platform where we can all support each other with the information we've gotten so far from here, right? So please go and follow that page. Uh, Lebo, my last South African uh, follower. How are you? Greetings, brother. I'm doing fine. Thank you. Canada Visa Forum African Chapter. Please go and follow that page. Share that page. I want it to become the number one support platform when it comes to visa applications. So any questions where you get it, they apply for a visa, if they struggle, if they feel from, you know, they see the, how to do them, you go post them for there. Either myself or somebody will come online and will help you. I no one make you go spend $500,000 paying a connection person to come and help you. No, 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 guys. Let's help each other. Canada Visa Forum is going to be the number one support platform for that, okay? Please, what opportunities are available for military personnel? To be honest, I don't know anything for military personnel at the moment. Chris, uh, Chris Bay, I don't know anything for military personnel at the moment. Um, countries like UK and the US have something like that for contractor military persons where you can come in and do a military thing on contract. I don't know much about that, so I won't educate you on that. But for Canada, I do not know of any military thing now for uh, people yet, okay? Sorry about that. Cash Tosu, hi, I'm enjoying your live video. Uh, God bless you. John Bright, call us, uh, Canada Visa Forum, African Chapter. That's the name. Please follow that page. Follow that page. It will help you in the future a lot, a lot. Canada Visa Forum. Na Okain Kotete. Na Okain Kotete. I'm looking for a particular na who I selected to help today. Um, I mentioned your name now. If you come on, I'm going to let you know, okay? Yeah, I know you so well. Yesterday, you said um, you shared all my videos on your page. God bless you. You shared all my videos on your page. God bless you. Um, what opportunities for track engineer? Um, what kind of engineer are you? Do you have a degree? Mr. Chukwe Buka, do you have a, a, a degree? If yes, what class was your degree? Was it a first class? Was it a second class, a lower or a third class? I want to answer your question here, Ms. Mr. Ebuka, if you can uh, just post your question here. Anytime you talk about you have a degree, please add your GPA or your class. It helps me to give you the right answer. It's so general when you say I have a degree in this. It doesn't help me because I don't know what your class was. In fact, even when you say the class, it's not too helpful. Add your GPA and then I'm able to give you an advice. Does it make sense to you? Karim Nishi, uh, for the college student, do you need to have funds for... Uh, as, assuming one year for your accommodation. Hmm, that's a good question. Let me answer this here. So, guys, let me say this. There are two things you need to prove to the embassy when you get admission and you're applying for your visa. First, you need to prove to them that 
you have enough money to be able to pay your one year college fees. So let me use an example here. If you apply to New Brunswick Community College and the fees is $8,000 and say you made 60% payment or even you paid everything and you got, got a receipt from the school and then you are using the receipt to apply for your visa. You need to prove to the embassy that you have the means through a bank statement to pay that $8,000. That is one number, one number one. Number two, you need to also prove to the embassy that you have an additional money for living expenses in Canada. Now, remember this living expense has nothing to do with your school fees. It has everything to do with your food, your clothes, where you go where, um, where you go to sleep accommodation. So that's what brings your question in. Lower class here, yeah? lower your chances are very slim. I will recommend you apply to Memorial University if you believe you can't still get it. If you believe your grades are not that bad. And then you can also probably consider applying to a college if you think you can afford it. Okay, Mr. Chukwebuka. So try Memorial University uh, for scholarship. And whilst you have that application going on, try uh, something on the side. Second class up at 3.2, Eric Tete. Try Memorial University, Mr. Eric. Try Memoria, and then after that, you can also add Manitoba, University of Manitoba. You may have a good chance. Up with second class upper, you have a good chance. Just make sure your other documents are strong enough. Guys, I have a video that I've done in the past, and the video is about how to put strong documentation together. Please go and watch that. It will show you how to put strong documents together when you're applying to a school, okay? So let's talk about this question that the gentleman asked about accommodation. Aside from your school fees, you need to show the embassy that you have at least an extra 10,000 Canadian dollars for your living expenses. How would they check this? They will review your bank statement. They will review your proof of work, how much you make on salary. And then they can determine whether this person can afford both the school fees and their living costs. Now that is where if you don't have a bank statement, if you have a relative or a brother or somebody who is willing to guarantee for you, you can easily go and do an affidavit in addition to their bank statement. What is an affidavit? Basically, going to a court clerk, a clerk in one of your your Supreme Court or wherever your law offices are, and tell them that you need an affidavit on the bank statement. They are going to say that you know what they verify the documents, and this person is guaranteeing to be the sponsor for this person by bearing the cost of their uh, living. That's what I did when I was coming. Even though I had a scholarship, I still had to prove that I could still afford my living expenses. Right, so I got a bank statement. Thankfully, I got a good bank statement from someone. I remember the bank statement was probably around six hundred to eight hundred thousand. No, six hundred to eight hundred million those days. Mm? That was in two thousand and fourteen. Um, six hundred to eight hundred million Ghana cities, old cities. Uh, that would probably be. In fact, it was around ten thousand dollars or more. It was ab above that. In addition to my scholarship. So when the embassy is going to use that to determine that this person can afford to live here and pay their own fees and also pay their own accommodation. Now, how, when you come in, how do you... I recommend when you're coming, don't come with an empty hand, guys. At least come with some money. When I was coming to Canada, I remember I had about $1,000 to $1,500 in my pocket. Yes, I had about $1,000 to $1,500 in my pocket. So when I came in, I used $350 to pay for my rent. I used about three to $400 to buy a laptop because I needed a laptop. And then the rest was just extra money that I kept just in case of anything. Because I was on scholarship, I was paid every two weeks about $400 to $500 for being a teaching assistant, uh, which was a job that came with my scholarship. So I was getting paid. So in your case, guys, if you get a visa, you are asking, how do you pay your accommodation? I recommend you come with some extra savings. Maybe a 1000 to 2000 at least 2000 3000 In fact, save some money. At least come with about two to three months rent. Right? And then when you come, your student visa allows you to work part-time. Be aggressive. Start getting a job right away. Do you remember the gentleman I interviewed yesterday? He was coming from a job interview at Tim Hortons, which is a Canadian company. Tim Hortons. Uh -huh. I'm going to type the name there. I don't know if you see T-I-M. Somebody should type it. T-I-M space 
H O R T O N S, Tim Hortons. This guy was coming from an interview there. He wants to go and work at a coffee store, a company, so he can sell coffee, he can work there, Tim Hortons. In short, when you come here, the moment, in fact, start working. What I even recommend is this, guys. You see, if you apply for your visa early enough, huh, try and come in a bit early. Let me give you this one. I had my visa in May. I had my visa on the 5th of May, 2014. That was the day they issued my visa to me. 5th of May, 2014. My school was not going to start until um, September 1st. I think it was September 5th. Yeah, my school didn't start until September 5th, 2014. Do you know what I did? I thought when I come in, I was going to start paying rent and all of that. So I didn't come in. I waited until August 26th. That was when I arrived in Canada. Five or six days to my start of my school. Looking back. Was that the right decision or smart decision to do, to take? No. Given who I am and what I do, if I had come earlier, it would have helped me. So this is what happened. If I had come right in the month of May, even though my school was starting in August, uh, September, I could have actually started working right away by applying for some jobs. Yes, you heard me right. Even though your school hasn't started, so long as your permit says you are allowed to work, if you enter the country, you can aggressively start looking for a job and start doing some part-time work for that three, four months to save money. And then when your school starts, you just work out go to school. But what many people do is that they wait to the last minute and then they come in. I don't mind. That's your choice. Remember, that's what, what I also did. But given what I know now, if my visa was maybe six months ahead of the starting day of the school, I would have come early and probably hustled right away. Tim Hortons, Karim Nietzsche, thanks for writing that. That's a company that gentleman went to interview for yesterday. Um, yeah, I mean, if your visa is issued ahead of time and you have an aggressive mindset, I'm saying this. If you know you're a lazy person, we know they like take action, make no camo. And you can't talk, say you came and you spent all your money. Now me, where I advise you. I'm talking about people where their mind, they, they, they're hungry, they, they look for money. Eh? come early come early even if you are paying rent I trust you will be able to do something I'm telling you you will be able to hustle and save money there are people who come and then within 6-7 months ahead they are here and then they work and they save money and they make a lot guys this advice is for people who are hustlers if you are not a hustler don't try it I'm not talking about somebody who is going to come in here and take pictures and be posting on Instagram every day. Look, guys, when I traveled to Canada, eh, my first four years, I barely had a, a WhatsApp picture. I barely had a picture on Facebook. You, you, in fact, none of you, those who knew me, you probably didn't even see me on Facebook. You know why? I was hustling. No time. No time to go and post. Some of you go travel. One day you post pictures as if say na have na 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 na, na dollar the four for three. Yeah, na real hustling way they happen. Huh? When I traveled, I had no time to even go and post pictures on Facebook. I didn't want to create that impression that people would think I just traveled overnight and everything is looking gold. No, I was busy working on myself. I only decided to come on Facebook because this is the time God wants me to start acting. This is the time God wants me to start releasing myself. Other than that, you hardly will see me on Facebook. Hardly will. In fact, if any of you is, is my friend, you would have noticed that in the last how many years, I don't have a DP on WhatsApp. I don't like marketing myself. When you see me, I'm real. When you see me coming like this, now action time. Some people go travel. Eh? Some people go travel. Instead of them to go and look for work and hazard, huh? They will now say, hey, this place, unlimited internet. Too. They will stay home and watch movie. They will watch everything on Netflix. They will watch everything in local TV. They will watch everything on Adam TV. They will watch everything on any YouTube channel. And then they will come and say that they are not making money. This same country, they, these same countries that are producing billionaires. How, how do you, you know if you survive for Africa? Here too, you know they survive. Hey. Eh? Now serious, oh. Eh? Every day, selfie, every day. Look. It's your choice to go and do selfie. I'm talking to people who have hustling mindset like me. Me, I don't get time for photo. Eh? 
Even this beer, beer self, eh? somebody has to remind me to shave it. My mind is all... Look, the kind of poverty I have been through eh, has made me not to even have time for anything that is not serious. I'm not kidding you. I don't want anybody in my bloodline from my... No, oh my God. She will never go through that. You will never go through that, daughter. Daughter of Zion, you will never go through that. She will never go through that. Never. Whatever I've gone through, she will never go through that. I'm not saying don't take photos, guys. But I'm saying be busy with important things. Half your priority is right. Don't travel here and go and sleep and say this place is not a work. It works. It's produced billionaires. Elon Musk traveled from South Africa to Canada. And then from Canada, he moved to U.S. Today, he's a billionaire. That guy immigrated just like me from South Africa. Did you know Elon Musk of tesla came and he migrated to canada when he was a young man and from canada he now decided to move to us today we are talking he's a billionaire this same thing we had to share with you this same thing we had to share with you so guys there is a lot i can keep talking and talking and talking all right let's go to your questions now anybody else with a question anybody else with a question daniel peter god bless you brother Th thank you thank you so guys if you're a hustler, man, I'm telling you, hustlers never lack. No hustler, no hustler. Nobody with a hustler's mindset. They travel go Ibo land. We know they may come. Kennedy of Japan, that rich man for Ghana. From the day he was traveling, he knew he would succeed. Because the mind, the mind, they, the mind, they. Eh? Me, the day I sat inside that plane, eh? the only thing. <laughs> Let me share my prayer with you guys. When I was in the plane. And the plane set off from Accra, Ghana, Kotoka. Eh? You know the kind of place I was praying? I was in this. <laughs> that was not my first time flying. My first trip out on a plane was to Nigeria. I was going to do a business conference in Abuja, uh, my Tama. So that was my first time ever flying. But my second time ever flying was to Canada. Huh? When, I was, when I was in the plane, 10 p.m., 10, 15 p.m. I remember so well, 25th August, 10, 15 p.m. Lufthansa flight. We're going to Germany. I was going to go through Frankfurt and then from there come to Canada. Guys, when I was in the plane, let me tell you the prayer I was praying. <laughs> I said, oh Lord Jesus, I believe you. I believe this day is the day you are taking me out of this continent for good. Not just because like I, I prayed and I said, look, I'm going to the land that they're producing billionaires. I will make it. Those were the prayers I was praying. I will make it. I have been through too much poverty. Poverty that has shamed me. People called me names when I was in school. When I was in Choco Presby Primary School, people called me names because my clothes were tattered. My clothes were, there were holes in the back. You could see my buttocks from the back. When I was in JSS, Collegona 3, there were friends that gave me names because I couldn't afford f food. There were friends I used to go and ask them, can I come and eat some of your kinky? And they laughed at me. They gave me name. In fact, when I was in Collegona 3, the nickname that I had was Credit Union. They used to call me Credit Union because I was always borrowing. I was always borrowing. My colleagues from there, you know this. You know you gave me that name. They gave me that name. They said I was always borrowing food and borrowing, borrowing. So they nicknamed me Credit Union. Credit. Everybody. They knew I was the brightest. But anytime they saw me, they said Credit. And another person would say Union. They were mocking me. Bitter did they know. Little did they know that this young man would never give up. Little did they know that this young man would never give up. When I went to secondary school, I never went to boarding school because I couldn't afford it. I used to walk for about... Guys, do you know Choco? Choco to Kaneshi, I used to walk most of the time in a week to go to school. Have you, have you ever gone through life? I slept under kiosk. My parents were, were not there for me. Nobody from my family was there for me. I have been through a lot. I have been through a lot. When I was on that plane, when I was on that plane, I prayed. And I said, Lord, don't let this aircraft, this plane, have an accident. I don't want it to fall in the Mediterranean, no? so that it will say that missing plane. I don't want to be part. Let me land in that country. When I landed, I was surveying the country. And I was looking. Oh, my God. And you see, I, I, I came to their provincial capital called Ontario. And then I saw on the board, you know what the motto was at that time? 
They've changed it now. The motto to say yours to discover. I say, ah, ah, you are telling me to come and discover this country. I'm coming to discover it like uh, Christopher Columbus. I'm coming to discover this country. I'm coming to discover the gold here. The golden opportunities here. When I saw that yours to discover, I said, Lord, you are speaking to me. I am coming to discover this country. Yes, I prayed that the plane will not have an accident. I prayed that nobody will take the plane down. I prayed that it will make it safely across Africa. I prayed that I will land. And when I landed, I remember that night. I didn't sleep, huh? The first night, midnight, I woke up around 2 a.m. I had spoken to a friend of mine who was in the UK, E.A. Prempe. He's now a pastor, E.A. Prempe. Back in Legon, his nickname was Geges. If anybody knows Geges, he ran, he contested for SRC, SRC president those days in campus, uh, Legon campus. He is a vandal from Commonwealth. I'm also a vandal from Commonwealth. Huh? When I came here, I talked to him on the phone and he said, he's now a pastor, E.A. Prempe. Hmm? He's on Facebook. He's now a pastor. I talked to him. I said, oh, boss. He was my senior. So I called him. I said, I just landed in Canada. He said, hey, young man, can I tell you something? I said, yes. No wonder that man is a pastor now. He said, in the middle of the night, go and walk on the street whilst everybody is asleep and pray into the land. Pray into the land. Pray that God will give you what is here for you, all the treasures of this land. I said, Lord, thank you. I followed his directions. And I went out that very night, my first night. I didn't sleep. I wasn't on Facebook posting pictures. So I went out and I walked in the middle of the night on the street. And I was praying and I was praying and I was telling Lord, God, show me the way. Give me good friends. Clear all the demons out of my way. Bad friends will go make a smoky go. Take them out of my life. Bad friends will go make a ten womanizer. Take them out of my life. Bad friends will go make a go casino. Take them out of my life. Bad friends will go make a go jail. Take them out of my life. Let me connect with people who will take me to the next place. Let me connect. Let me connect. Make me. Make me. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. Guys, do you really want to succeed? Take actions. Make decisions. The decisions you make today is not just about you. Generations to come. Generations to come. My grandparents' decision affected me today. My father's decision in the past affected me today. Some of you today are struggling because of what your parents have done in the past. Will you pay the price? Will you pay it forward? Will you pay it forward? Will you pay the hard work? Will you go through the discipline of making some serious decisions today? Or will you wait? To die only to realize you were placed in a planet where you could have it all. God bless you. This is Choco Millionaire. I enjoy talking to you and I hope you're blessed. Share my video. Let it reach every youth. And let us inspire people. God bless you.